Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, ARDS, is a devastating syndrome with mortality between 30 to 50 percent. ARDS is a syndrome with a marked heterogeneity in pulmonary gas distribution. Currently, the only known treatment is supportive in the form of mechanical ventilation. However, improper ventilation can exacerbate lung damage, leading to a ventilator-induced lung injury. There are three basic mechanisms of ventilator-induced lung injury. First, volutrauma, overexpansion of alveoli due to high volumes relative to the ventilated lung compartment. Second, atelectotrauma, sheer stress-induced injury caused by unstable alveoli recruiting and de-recruiting. And last, biotrauma, an inflammatory reaction occurring secondary to the tissue damage caused by the combined effect of volume and atelectotrauma. Normal alveolar mechanics are poorly understood. It is widely believed that alveoli are balloons that expand and contract with each breath. It's further hypothesized that pulmonary surfactant stabilizes these balloons and prevents alveoli from collapsing at low lung volumes or overexpanding at high lung volumes. Although intuitive, anatomical data suggests that this uh, hypothesis is incorrect. Uh, histologic studies demonstrated that alveoli are not uh, similar to grapes on a vine, but rather interdependent structures with shared alveolar walls with connective tissue running throughout these walls. I believe that there are three basic support systems for the alveolus. First, anatomical alveolar interdependence. Second, the connective tissue support system that runs within the alveolar wall throughout the entire lung and is connected to the pleural surface. And lastly, the pulmonary surfactant system. The connective tissue system uh, is in a constant state of stress such that it supports and maintains alveolar patency. And pulmonary surfactant lowers surface tension on the alveolar surface. Although the exact physiologic function of surfactant is debatable, uh, the fact remains that if surfactant is deactivated, alveoli collapse and become adlictatic. And maybe more importantly, uh, alveoli become unstable and collapse and expand with each breath. It is this dynamic change in alveolar mechanics that we believe is the mechanism of ventilator-induced lung injury. In our own laboratory, utilizing in vivo microscopy, we have demonstrated that alveolar size changes very little with tidal ventilation. However, in the acutely injured lung with abnormal surfactant, alveoli change size greatly with each breath. Further studies have demonstrated that these unstable alveoli cause significant injury to the pulmonary parenchyma. So together, these studies suggest that unstable alveoli are a significant mechanism of ventilator-induced lung injury. The marked heterogeneity in gas distribution seen in acute lung injury is associated with abnormalities in the alveolar dynamics resulting in cyclic collapse and regional over-distension. If the ventilatory strategy can be adjusted to convert abnormal alveolar mechanics to normally functioning alveoli, it might significantly reduce the morbidity and mortality associated with ventilator-induced lung injury. Will converting abnormal alveolar mechanics to normal alveolar mechanics with protective mechanical ventilation reduce ventilator-induced lung injury? It has already been demonstrated that positive end expiratory pressure, or PEEP, will significantly reduce uh, pulmonary damage associated with ventilator-induced lung injury. Uh, however, it's postulated that the more protective uh, ventilator strategy would be first to open the entire lung and then add sufficient PEEP to keep these newly recruited alveoli open and stable. Fully recruiting the lung will improve gas distribution, resulting in a homogeneous filling of the lung, restored alveolar interdependence and alveolar stabilization. As atelectasis are eliminated, the incidence of pneumonia is reduced. Additionally, an optimal PEEP setting after total lung recruitment will eliminate the population of unstable alveoli opening and closing with each insufflation. There are several methods describing lung recruitment. Methods that maintain ventilator cycling have shown to have the least circulatory side effects. 
A common recommendation is to use pressure controlled ventilation with an inspiratory to expiratory ratio of 1 to 1. Pressure above PEEP is fixed at 15 centimeters of water through the recruitment procedure. PEEP is started at 15 and during continuous monitoring of the circulation increased in 5 centimeters of water increments. To successfully open the lung, it is of critical importance to administer a PEEP level above the collapsing point, indicating that for a start, PEEP should be set at or above 25 centimeters of water. The open lung tool will then guide you, whatever recruitment strategy you choose. Changes in lung compliance and expired CO2 are easily identified with the breath-to-breath -breath display of the open lung tool. A drop in dynamic compliance and tidal elimination of carbon dioxide signifies that the opening pressure is reached. Maintain ventilation at these settings for two minutes. After opening the lung, PEEP titration is commenced at 20 to 25 centimeters of water. The higher level is used for high recruitment pressures. PEEP is lowered in steps of 2 cm of water until dynamic compliance decreases. This point is referred to as the collapsing point. The open lung tool will allow you to go back in time and easily identify recruitment points. After the collapsing point has been reached, the lungs are re-recruited using the same settings as for the opening pressure. Ventilation is maintained at these settings for one to two minutes. Optimal PEEP is now set at the collapsing point, plus two to three centimeters of water. Pressure above PEEP is adjusted to achieve a tidal volume of six ml per kilo. A clear improvement in dynamic compliance will signal successful recruitment. To maintain the lung open, re-recruitment should always be performed after the patient has been disconnected or suctioned. With the assistance of the open lung tool, your recruitment strategy can be easily and reproducibly applied as a standardized maneuver. Quantitative assessment of the outcome is at your fingertip.